Your Excellency, you have provided an excellent framework for our discussions over the next days. May I follow up with one or two questions? Uh, the first question relates uh, to the role of governments. Um, the United, we have here um, with the Vision 2031, you have a clear framework. But what is actually, and I congratulate you for having such a visionary approach, but what is actually the role of governments? Very simple. The role of government is designing a better future for a society in a short term. But Professor, we live in a very unique time in human history. Humanity is changing. A couple of hundred thousand years ago, we discovered fire. It gave us warmth, but also changed the way we digest food through changing the enzyme. It gave us better capability. It was part of our evolution. Today, and it took that, that took hundreds of thousands of years. Today, we live in an era where human civilization is changing in the, the next 30 to 50 years. And the change wouldn't take hundreds of thousands of years. It will take a few years. So our role as government is to get our society, our education system, our healthcare system ready for the changes. Today, we have huge capability, huge capability as, as government and as society and as humanity. We have knowledge, knowledge that our ancestors took them thousands of years to build, to learn. Today, we get it in a fraction of a second. So the role of government, the next phase, it's very important if we design a better future will have a better society. And as I stated in my speech, today we live in an early stage when it comes to, to really technology, very early. We still, we are like in first or second, second of technology. So evolution that will take place will be totally different from whatever we've seen. Are we ready for it? Are society ready for it? Are government ready for it? So always I stated something, our role as a minister, as government official, we are designer. Okay, they should take the, the title minister from, I think, every single minister across the world and put designer. Our job is to design a better future for our society and for the world. Your Excellency, you have a clear vision for uh, the country. Uh, but when we look at uh, this region, there are certain concerns. How do you see the future of the region, actually? I'll try to simplify my answer. We need to decide, do we want to live in the past or we want to live in the future? All the conflict of our region is based on the past, all of it. It's very important to understand our history because it does reflect in our present, but very important to move to the future. And the leadership in the United Arab Emirates have decided that. We want to move our society to the future. We want to design a better future for our people, but also with a value within this. Technology is important, economy is important, but building society is very important. Creating hope is very important. We live in the Middle East, and sometimes part of the problem in the Middle East is young people, they don't have hope. So whatever we do, we have a philosophy in it. It's how can we build hope for young people? How can we create young people that can reach places that others are struggling in the region. So our job was really throughout the past 50 years is how do we move to the future? How we design a better future for us? Is it doable? It is doable. I mean, just walk outside this auditorium and look at the future. You see it in the Emirates, you see it in our city, you see it in our people. 
you don't see only that, but you see the most important thing, element in the future, which is how do you integrate different nationality, different religion, different race, in one single country in peace and harmony without a single conflict? And that's part of the future. For us, we are really obsessed with the future because we know the past in this region and history of this region always will create conflict. It's important to understand it. We understand history very well. We understand history very well to the point that we have decided that we want to move to the future and we want to move to the future quite fast. Thank you, Professor. Minister Gagavi, uh, you had uh, with the, I, I have to uh, highlight that what we are doing here with the Global um, Future Councils, of course, it has had a great impact on many of our own initiatives, but you were serving as a kind of sandbox for many of the initiatives which were developed here by the Global Future Council. So I just want to assure what you are doing is not of a theoretical nature. It has a very direct uh, local, national, and also global impact. Always, I, I thank you and I thank the forum for whatever we learn. I've been in the forum for the past 22 years. You know, I'm one of the few people that stay that long and we learn so much for us. And, and the good thing with the Future Council, we have different, we have 30 council here, we learn from it. And what we do, we go and implement a lot of ideas that's suitable for us and that's very important, I think so, in designing country, designing economy, designing society, the world have changed. And there is a beacon of hope in the heart of the Middle East. And this beacon of hope in the heart of the Middle East, you can call it, you know, the United Arab Emirates, you can call it the young people of this region, but our job was always, I know it's hard, it's a lot of work, but can we change the narrative of the Middle East? Can we create brand out of the Middle East? Can we create beautiful city in the Middle East? Can you have safety and security in the Middle East? And let me tell you, we are one of the most secure country and safe city in the world, one of the top three. These are important. This is how we change narrative. This is how we learn. So, Professor, I, I've been talking a lot. I heard your speech. You talk about, you know, the intelligent age. What does make the intelligent age different than AI? Can you elaborate? <laughs> I think uh, artificial intelligence is a driver for this intelligent age. But we should not forget uh, other technologies, quantum computing, the metaverse, and I could go on and on. And all those technologies reinforce each other. So they are not isolated. They are, in some way, a part of a complete um, new approach which we will have to find um, or which will be offered to us. I'm a big believer in the opportunities those technologies offer. But we have to be aware, it's similar to the transition when we moved from a agricultural society to an industrial society. We are moving now from an industrial society to what I call a intelligent society. And um, the difference is when we had the last transition, uh, we had several generations time to adapt. Now the adaptation has to be done and certainly should be done in the next 10 to 15 years because uh, the technological development has gained exponential speed. We should not forget, I mean, artificial intelligence was around since a long time, but it's actually only since two, three years that we really talk about it and just see what impact it already had. So what um, we want to do in, in Davos and uh, starting here is to get the integrated picture and particularly what is the impact on society and how has society to prepare itself. I just say, um, I mentioned maybe one or two areas. Uh, one area is the reskilling and upskilling. We don't know yet what the effect will be. We have a, 
uh, Global Future Council on the Future of Work, which will uh, enlighten us. But uh, there will be a huge uh, reshifting of the workforce with also um, political implications because uh, it affects particularly the higher middle class. So um, then, of course, we have the whole issue of creating um, the uh, ethical boundaries around those technologies because artificial intelligence can not only be predictive, it can become prescriptive and it can become prescriptive in an uncontrolled way. So um, many issues where we have to find uh, solutions for. But I just come back. I, we never should forget this, uh, those technologies are not a threat to humankind. It depends on us how we deal with those. But they can help us, A, to solve many of the existing problems, particularly in the environmental area. I compare it with the invention of the book in the uh, of printing in the 14th century. It enabled uh, at that time what we call the Renaissance, a new, very uh, flourishing time in the arts. And I feel that this um, uh, intelligent age will allow us to develop even more our human capabilities of creativity, of empathy, uh, of um, uh, human feelings. So we should approach what uh, we are shaping with a very positive attitude and, as you said, with hope for the future. Thank you, Professor. Uh, we, we talked about uh, challenges. What are the three foremost challenges for humanity, Professor? I think we are, so for the first time, in a situation where humanity uh, could destroy itself. I mean, we have the nuclear issue. People speak again about atomic bombs and so on. Uh, we have the uh, environmental issue. And we have now uh, the technological uh, challenge, uh, uh, creating uh, boundaries, um, rail guards around, uh, particularly around artificial intelligence. So the key challenge for humankind and such was the forum stands so much for is global cooperation. We are all, we are all members of the same global community. Um, we have to address those issues. We have to find solutions before it's too late. So global cooperation is the biggest to restart and to, to reinvigorate global cooperation on those issues is probably the biggest um, task which um, governments at the moment which governments at the moment have thank you professor it's always enlightening to hear from you and we we thank uh, the council for their effort in designing and shaping a better future for humanity uh, we'll take one minute just for their highnesses uh, to leave then we'll continue the next session uh, with our guests Thank you, Professor. Thank you.